This is the Ink Pray Love podcast. We talk all things health, wealth, and community connection. Let's go. Welcome to this episode of the Ink Pray Love podcast. I have one of my closest buddies here today. What a freaking honor and makes me happy that you got to see you again after 10 months away uh this is my buddy dylan werner he's a world-renowned yoga teacher he's an author of the illuminated breath he was also my nurse during my accident like one or two times (laughs) dylan's a gem he also has a really dark sense of humor that people don't really hear about because he's a yogi but we're hilarious together dylan thank you for coming i appreciate you i'm just happy to see you again my friend Uh, how you doing i'm doing good (laughs) open with a dark sense of humor yeah um yeah yoga community is funny Like there's so many like nuances. There's so much like, yeah, we're pretty hilarious people. And then we like in yoga, it's kind of serious. So you got to be like this, like, you know, what have you seen in that sense? Like you got to kind of dial it down a little bit in your trainings or are you just ridiculous all the time? I I don't think I'm ridiculous. Uh, (laughs) I I think you're ridiculous. You know, different, different groups that you're in bring out different qualities of who you are, but they're all you, I think. Um, Yoga definitely has its own culture and and stuff. I I love the yoga culture. It's it is very inclusive and accepting of whoever you are. Like you said in the beginning, I do have a dark sense of humor. I still I'm still me. I still crack jokes and yeah. stuff. Um uh I think the the biggest thing with with like how I am in a training or as a teacher is transparency. Mm. And so I never try to pretend to be somebody that I'm not. You know, I, yeah. I try to be open and honest and show my flaws and i think that's how we learn as people yeah is we i i think like when we when we really look at the people that we respect that are great they're not the ones that are bolstering themselves up being like you know hey look at me my life's perfect everything about me is perfect and stuff it's more yeah. what we like to see is is the, the transformational journey if you look at like uh, viral videos and stuff it's the person that overcomes everything to kind of get to a point and it doesn't mean that they got to the point where like the, the best at whatever in the world but sometimes it's you know you're a transformational st- story from unfunctional to functional you know in, in in many different ways that's why people look at you and respect you it's either coming from like your your past of being a criminal facts <laughs> yeah, right yeah, yeah uh and then turning your life around starting multiple businesses and getting out there and, and going from someone that just wants to help themselves to someone that's really dedicated out there to helping other people and then also like after your accident and stuff like that's another transformational story like people like to see the struggle because we all have struggles yeah. we're all working through something um what brings people together is the ability to see your story and someone else's story. Mm. And, and that's where connection really starts to form because it, one of the concepts that we talk about in yoga a lot is Maya, this idea of illusion or things. I always, I always like to talk about this idea of Maya, that the illusion is separation and Mm -hmm. that's where suffering comes from. This, this idea that we are separate, but, there's a big difference between being separate and being different. We're all different. But if we could see the similarities in our differences, then we start to find this connection. And, and connection is what's going to bring us closer to the truth. And so when we see someone else overcoming things, we we look at how we are also, because no one comes into this life without struggle. No one makes it through life without struggle. And even if you're someone that's born with a golden spoon, you know, like you, rich parents and all the opportunities and you still are going to have some struggle because it's how you view your life. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah. Um, how does, how does yoga help you overcome struggles? Like for everybody that's like, I, I think everybody should do a yoga teacher training. Like everybody, even if you want to be a yoga teacher or not, you should do a yoga teacher training. It's just transformational. But how did that help you overcome? I think, I think there's a lot of trauma coming out of the military, coming out of being an, in, in a first responder. You see a lot of shit. Like it's crazy. I mean, if, when I went through my my teacher training, it was trauma from uh, that was brought up because we actually would sit around in a circle and talk and, mm. and have we do these these things called satya circles. The word satya mm. uh, in Sanskrit means truth, and so you'd sit around and someone would ask you a, a benign question like, "How do you feel?" and you'd be like, "Well, 
I feel heavy in my heart or whatever. And this is coming from like, I remember feeling this from when I was, you know, 10 years old. And, and, and so, um, uh, I, I realized I had been holding on to trauma from a, a, a pretty abusive childhood that I had, uh, both physically and, and mentally abusive from my stepmother growing up. And then that just carried with me and relationships that I had when I was younger were all affected from that. And then mm -hmm. I went into the military and I went to war and, and then there's all the trauma and PTSD from that stuff. And then I was a paramedic for four years and seeing all the trauma in there and, and just the, the life and death that you deal with a, on a daily situation and to being a firefighter paramedic for another four years. And so there was a lot of trauma in there. And when I really started, like, so I, I started practicing yoga, like the physical form. So it's like how yoga has helped you is an interesting question because people listening to this, especially like your audience, maybe not my audience. I don't know how much of your audience are yogis and how much are entrepreneurs or, or wherever they're coming from. But this idea of yoga is, is viewed really different. Some people think it's this physical practice of doing warrior poses and downward facing dog and sweating in a group, in a room full of people in, in stretchy pants, you know, <laughs> uh, and other people see it as more of a spiritual meditative journey and some see it, you know, somewhere in there. So it really like how you define this word yoga is important to see, like, how yeah. does yoga change you? And the easiest way to to kind of answer that of what yoga is is yoga is, is a pathway to understanding the truth mm. the reason why you do poses and stuff is because that's the body right we we have to feel good in our body we have to strengthen our body it's the vessel it's what it's what holds the container it's just like this glass holds the water without without this glass water is just everywhere right so you have to if you care about the contents you have to make the container mm. physically strong and capable and not broken to be able to work on what the contents are inside. And then once you have that, then you can start working on the different, the the deeper levels of who you are, the self, the, this, yeah, it's this coming to the truth. Yeah. And so yoga is the mind, the body, the breath, the spirit, all of those things, not separate. And a lot of other philosophies, we often separate the body away from the contents. And so I, I would say that's like one of the big differences with yoga is yoga is just taking all these philosophies. I mean, if it's true, it's true. It doesn't matter if it's coming from India or if it's coming from Africa, right? It's, yeah. it's truth. Uh, and, and so once you start to understand the truth and these layers of truth, that's the even harder part is like when we start talking about what truth is, yeah, yeah. we start going into layers of truth. Um, do you, can you guys turn the AC yeah, off? I'm freezing. It's, it's freaking cold. It's cold, yo. It's yeah, I'm like, I'm like shaking yeah, yeah, yeah. in I here. Like, I was thinking that the exact same time. I'm yeah. like, yo, it's pretty cold, man. <laughs> Just turn down a in, little bit. In, in Bali, it's yeah. like, it's, 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 it's hard to get the temperature right because yeah. it's super hot outside yeah. and then you blast AC inside and then you're freezing and yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Just, you're like outside was like 35. Just, just kill it for a minute yeah. and then put yeah. it on like Matikan 24. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's so funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks bro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back to our schedule programming. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. I can't even talk. I'm really sorry to shake. Uh, <laughs> So you get in, get into different layers of truth and the, the hardest one where the separation comes from is how most people view the truth. And when I say truth, I do mean it as truth. It mm -hmm. is, it is a truth. It's my truth, right? Or your truth okay. or your truth, right? It's, it's how you experience life. And so the only thing that you know, obviously, is your experience, how things come into you, how you process them and how they come back out. But everyone is experiencing it different and we are reacting to it different. And so if we only see truth as our truth, then we only see ourselves mm -hmm. and everything else is just kind of becomes a separation. This is why people have such a hard time communicating. Even when they start talking to each other, they're talking about different truths, which is not not to say that your truth is has any more value than my truth or or is mine. my true truth truer than your truth yeah right cuz that's that's not what it's a, it's about but what yoga does is as it breaks down that the that separation it breaks down that subjective truth 
and again, I'm just using yoga as a word. It's yoga is a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when you understand how to use the vehicle that you carry around, it's not the only way that you can navigate these waters or learn mm -hmm. about it. It's, it's again, it's just a word that we all have a different truth or a different idea about. And then when you get more into the, the objective truth, like when you remove yourself from that, then you start to understand, well, one, someone else's truth and how it could be both completely different from yours and also 100% true for them. And, and like where your truth actually fits into reality. And, and the more that you're able to understand reality, the, the more you're able to step outside of yourself. Because the trauma comes from everything happening to you. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the saying, it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. Appreciate it. Right? <laughs> and so, like, it's your true. idea of, like, how can I use these things as a tool or whatever. But the, 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 the truth is nothing happened to you. Mm -hmm. Nothing ever happens to you. It just, it just Yeah, it just happens. Yeah. And so this, this victim mentality or the idea of forgiveness or all this stuff is, it, it kind of just fades away. Not mm. that it's not important, but it's not even needed. Mm. And so you, yeah, I mean, that's like the, the first way that yoga really started to change my life. So it wasn't about having all this trauma. And I, I've talked about this several times before, but it's such an important point is like, when I think back to myself as a child and my stepmother, you know, she hit me with my with her car when I was like ten years old. Uh, I was like, like spoon or belt or like. Oh shoot, no! Like no no. Car? She she was she was a small woman. Okay. So I was a very I'm I mean I'm not the biggest person now, but I was a small kid. She mm -hmm. was she was a small woman. So she, you know. But when you're like, she came into my life when I was like five years old, and she didn't like me. <laughs> and she was also 21, and she had a drug problem, an alcohol problem, and. There was relationship problems with her and, and my father, and my father was still in love with my mother. And there's so there's so many different things why she didn't like me. Mm. But it wasn't even that she didn't even like me. She didn't like herself or yeah. the situation. She had all her problems. But I'm understanding things as a five year old to 13 year old was when she left my life. And so I always thought like I needed to forgive her. And she did all these things to me, but she was just acting out in, in, just out of pain and hurt and so she didn't do those things to me she did those things to herself mm -hmm. right and so now i could instead of like seeing like oh i have all this trauma from my childhood and i'm such a victim i just see it as as like i feel sorry for her mm -hmm. i feel of course what she did wasn't right no one should ever hurt a child but being the child that was hurt like i don't have to be like oh it's because of something that i did or I was wrong, or I need to carry this hatred for her, or any of that. I was just able to, to let it go because, because it wasn't me. It wasn't yeah. about me. Um, and so that's kind of like the like the first steps of what yoga yoga does. I guess I don't know. When you say layers of truth, that stuck out for me. Like, how would you explain layers of truth? Layers of truth. Uh, so the first layer would i i guess like if if you you could break it down into three layers of truth mm -hmm. the first layer of truth this is your yourself starting with yourself and you can imagine this as this is the layer of truth where you have your glasses on like your purple tinted glasses and so everything you see is is your truth but mm -hmm. it's all purple mm -hmm. right so you take that off and actually you could you could leave that those purple glasses on because under that truth and we're we're starting to see the second truth which is the truth that is imposed upon us this is cultural truth mm. and so these are ideas that aren't yours that are made to for you to think that they're yours mm. i mean this is where racism comes from this is where bigotry comes from from homophobia all all cuz we are not born hateful people mm -hmm. Right? You ever seen a baby like, yeah. cr you know, crawling around? And it's like, fuck you, you know, <laughs> you know like, like th this yeah. is, this is something that is taught through yeah. generations of hate yeah. and culture, and and I mean, even things like femininity, masculinity, what's appropriate to wear, yeah. uh, you know, religion. There's a lot of influence of 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 hate and religion, and and it all comes down to, again, separation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're you're different. You're a different religion than me. Yeah. You're a different color than me. You're a different uh, sexual preference than me. You're whatever it is. 
it's you're different from me and therefore I, I don't like that. And then I'm being told through from my upbringing that I don't like you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's other devices that live in this, this cultural truth that aren't, that this is actually the lead, this is not a truth at all, but it's only true because other people believe in it, mm -hmm. money, uh, countries, yeah. you know, job titles, all these things, all these things that create separation. So those all kind of live with inside your glasses as well. And then the the deepest layer of truth is th the truth that is happening without you. Mm. And so when you're completely removed from it as the experiencer, as then that's what is actually happening. Mm. And so if you if you think about if you remove your ability of of experiencing it. So, which is something that we can't do. That 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 objective truth is impossible because you're always going to be the experiencer. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so everything that you know is happening through your experience and it's it's going in and it's going through your process of your childhood and your adolescence and who said what to you and everything and then you're having different preferences and judgments and and ideologies and beliefs and all that stuff is it's running through that filter and at the end something comes out and we would say oh that well that that's the truth mm -hmm. but that's your subjective truth it's been filtered through all these different aspects of yourself to what you think is real but you lost all that other stuff as it's gone and filtered through you so the more that you could take away that you could take away the the idea of self you know who i am this happens to me i feel this this you know mm -hmm. it take away all the different i stuff you take away all the cultural stuff you know society thinks that this is good and this is bad right you you take away all of that and then what you're you're left with at the end is what is actually true and, and you could consciously do this but it's only still an idea and it's only still also filtered through your through you but if you could spend time, this is where, where meditation and pranayama and uh, your, your sadhana practice, whatever, whatever your practice of understanding yourself goes through, when you, when you get through all those different things, then you have a better idea of what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about that is, is the, the first impact that it has is on yourself. Mm -hmm. You start to, you're able to love yourself a lot more because you're able to take away all those different filters that cause you to dislike whatever it is yeah you know i don't i don't like myself because i'm overweight or because i'm i'm not overweight um though actually if i i put my my height and my weight into a bmi calculator and i am overweight technically i'm i'm fat <laughs> <laughs> pretty jack bro but yeah i mean that's just because it doesn't measure in muscle mass and all that stuff yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> you're fat but but yeah so i hate myself because i'm fat i hate myself because i'm short I hate myself because i'm old i hate myself because i'm not as good as this person whatever you know these these are all like ideas that might not even be yours mm -hmm. but we we tend to feel less about ourselves because of this unnecessary judgment or comparison so we take away those things uh which come from culture they come from magazines they come from media they come from friends they mm -hmm. come from you know all you you, you remove all that uh, and then you start to understand your relationships with other people. So when you remove all that stuff, you're able to like fully love yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and that really helps because you're no longer working. It's really hard to work on a relationship if you're working on you, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like where, do, where does your time and energy go to if, if you're the one that's the problem? And then you try to work on the relationship. Well, we got to figure out this relationship thing, but, but I'm the problem. You know, so why do I need to work with you when I got to figure my shit out? Hmm. And so once you, you 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 drop these things, you realize, okay, well, I'm actually not a problem. There is no problem. I just need to love myself more. Hmm. And then you get into the relationships with others. And so there's here's all the things I don't like about you, right? Which were all the same things why I didn't like about me, but now they're you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I could remove all of those and I could start to see you as a person. And now there's, I don't need to work on anything about you because I'm not trying to change you. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the, the thing, with that, especially like romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. The problem is like, I love all these things about this person. And that's why you fall in love. That's why you get together. And then those things kind of start to fade. Yeah. 
right? And then the 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 small little things that start to become illuminated are the things that bother you. Mm -hmm. And and then you go, well, I love all this about this person, but there's like these little things over here. So let's work on changing these, right? And so how I'm going to do that about changing it is you're gonna you're gonna come home late. And you haven't didn't tell me where you came home from. And so I'm gonna be like, where the fuck were you? Were you out there fucking someone else? Like what's you know? But my my thing was, my whole thing was I just want communication and which is like number one, I want communication mm. and honesty. And I, I wanna feel respected. I wanna feel like you care that I know where you are. But how I'm gonna solve that is by attacking you and fighting and, yeah, and all yeah. these things when when you realize like well what do i want i want communication and i want truth and honesty and so instead of coming out in a fight then you just come out with like communication mm. oh i was really worried about you are, are you okay is everything good next time will you please let me know where you are mm -hmm. that would make me feel better because i worry mm. and it made me feel bad yeah right and and do you notice all the, like all those were was me 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 yeah. it wasn't about what you did yeah it was about how i was affected by that and again and, and why this is important because you're looking to accept so those little things that you you thought weren't so great that you needed to change you really just have to go those things are this person they don't need to change at all i just need to learn how to accept them and, and then you could actually have a good relationship with somebody. And this was, this is, you know, it's the most obvious with like your loved ones. It's, it also plays out with your friends. We tend to let a lot more go with our friends because we could just be like, oh, whatever, see you later. Mm -hmm. Right. Versus like your partner that you come home to all the time. So, but as you're able to change these, you're able to really just see the things that you love about whoever is in your life and accept the other things as not things that need to be changed, just just different aspects that you think are bad in the first place because of whatever cultural imprint that your childhood had on you. Mm. If that makes any sense. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I like it. That does make a lot of sense. It seems like there's a lot more responsibility or accountability. And that's kind of what I learned from my yoga teacher trainings as well was like, okay, a lot of this is me, like a lot. And that's where actually I'm a lot happier with other people when I deal with my own shit. And that was like a big thing. And I was like, oh, I got a lot of shit, which at the start is like unsettling. Like it's mm -hmm. like that that first part of the spiritual journey for me was pop bursting my bubble of like, I'm fucking cool. I'm the shit, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, oh, no, like you're, you're a deeply flawed human. And then you got power out of it. Like then I was like, OK, actually, but I can do something about it and yeah. accept the parts of me that are flawed. They're still there. Like you know, there's part of me that like there's a lot that I had to really just accept. But then it got better. Like it was like, OK. Uh, now from here on I can do some shit from that space of not all of me is big shiny and and you know puppies and sunshine there's parts of me that are like you know a, an old sandwich <laughs> <laughs> like an old like a really old yeah. sandwich like you right. forgot it under your seat yeah and I I would just say I would just take away the parts where you say you're flawed because you're you're not flawed these mm -hmm. are just aspects of yourself yeah and and when we when we don't understand those aspects, they come out in ways that aren't that aren't desirable or whatever, or, or don't lead to better relationships. How do you to understand like your I guess to not say flaws, understand aspects of yourself, but what if they're not so favorable? What if they're selfish or should, should we let's oh well, Alan Watts said everything that you do is selfish. This is actually I, I love talking about this. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, Tell me about it. <laughs> But let uh, we'll get back to that. I actually <laughs> talked about it in my last podcast too. So maybe I'm trying to give people something else. Sure. To, I don't, I'll only talk about like three things, anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if um, all right, wait, uh, re-ask the question again. Uh, the, okay. So the well, you brought up the selfish thing, but aspects of ourselves that are say undesirable. How do we accept them, but then do something? Like if you're not supposed, if there's nothing to change. But I do some selfish shit, you know. I was pretty corny when I first when I first started my journey. I, I wanted to shift those things. Like, how, what about us? Do we just accept? And you said it with friends and and lovers too. It's like, well, just accept them for the heart. But what if there's some stuff that should change? Like, where's the should and shouldn't? Where's the where does the power? Where, how do you split? How do you split that up? 
Well, it, it's it's how how the things are expressed. Okay. Right. I, I, I guess like when you do things selfishly, you're doing things to like make yourself feel better, mm -hmm. and so you start to treat everybody around you as as a tool to help you feel better. You put yourself at the center. Mm -hmm. The so the thing with the the Alan Watt stuff um, with talking about uh, thinking about everything that you do is selfish. I thought about that pretty hard for for actually for years and it wasn't until this year until like I had another understanding of it. And I don't know if it was Alan Watts, if it was his understanding or his reason for saying it. Cause like there's an easy, there's an easy way to say, okay, well I came here to do this podcast because it's going to help get my name out there to maybe some people that don't know about me rather than I came here on this podcast to, because my friend asked me and I want to help out my friend. Mm -hmm. So the when you when you look at everything it's not that saying everything that you do is selfish or every act is selfish the way i look at that now is is everything could be selfish okay or how do i see what's selfish in it and when you when you cuz oh um uh <laughs> this this is kind of going off the the subject but i was going to quote this video game god of war <laughs> Like in your video games. God of War Ragnarok. Uh -huh. In there, uh, the the video games have great stories. Actually, and also, and, and and this <laughs> this game, like God of War, is actually there's a lot of philosophical parts in it. Okay. But there's one line that uh, is said by one of the characters that there is it's it's actually Kratos, like the main guy, and he says that um, it it there's there's no intentions, only consequences. Mm. And, and this is a something that I've been thinking about a lot, and, and especially with yoga, because yoga is all about setting an intention, mm -hmm. and we talk about the intention. But if you think about there's there's no intentions, there's only consequences. So it's not about what you intend to do; it's about what results from that. And a lot of times we have really good intentions, mm -hmm. but poor results. Mm -hmm. And it's because it was it didn't have anything to do with our intentions; it had to do with the, what fueled our intentions or, or what our intentions led to, which is the actions, because mm -hmm. the actions are what lead to consequences. So if we could figure out how my intentions could be not lead to consequences, but to the, the results that I want to see, then everything that I'm going to do is going to be a lot better. Well, how do I do that? Well, consequences from, from your good intentions come from your selfish actions, meaning you're doing this to serve yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you are in a situation or whatever choice that you make, you, if we say everything is selfish and you start to, instead of like being like, no, how is this not selfish? You start to go, well, how is this selfish? How is this serving me? Okay. And then once you get to that point, you go, okay, well, how do I remove that? And once you remove that, then it, then your intention actually changes from an intention of like, I want to feel better. I want to be happier or what, whatever to being about something that's not going to end in consequences. Something Does that make sense? Something that's not going to end in consequences, but wouldn't everything end in, a, in some sort of consequence? Consequences, but you have desirable and undesirable. Or, or let, let, me, let me use another example that's kind of... Yeah, explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> let, me, let me use another example. This is the same one I use with our, our friend Renars. Um, so the the Asian parent, and I know this probably comes off as, as racist. I don't mean it to be racist at all. This is stereotypical, which is also racist. So I don't, there's really no winning out of this, but <laughs> he's not but, a racist. He's my friend. I promise, <laughs> I promise still is not racist. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully this comes through because there, this isn't all Asians or whatever, but this is something that from my Asian friends that mm. I know is normal in this culture. Mm. And that is parents wanting their kids to be very successful. Right. So yeah. you so you have you have the parent that 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 wants their kid to take music lessons, go to they go to summer school, they get into a really good college so they can have a really good job. Mm. But the reason why they do that, now this is hypothetical, of course. So you let's say you, t you have one set of parents and, and they want their kid to be great at everything, but the real reason is so that their friends yeah. and family respect them so so it could be like yeah look hey at my kid. look at look at my kid lawyer doctor right yeah. you know like let me let me brag about them yeah right yeah 
prestigious family marry right. another prestigious family. Right. What, so we're super prestigious. Yeah. Yeah, so, and 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 that's what it is. It's all about opulence yeah. and prestige, like yeah. like you said. Uh, but now you, you take that, and so that was the intention, and we understand the actions through that you know, summer school, musical instrument, getting into a good college, yeah. and all that. Now take the parents that instead of drilling their kid like you know, don't embarrass me, and and all these things, and you're going to be this and this. It's just the the parents that are like. I just want the best for my kid yeah. and it has nothing to do with me and whatever they want, I'm going to support them and give them all the opportunities and everything that they could, that, that they could have, you know, that's as my job as a parent. And so here is the same actions, piano lessons, mm -hmm. summer school, all that. But instead of it being about them, like it's about how you make me look, yeah. it's about, really wanting the best for your future like and, not, and nothing more yeah and so that's that's the difference between the the actions of being selfish versus altruistic yeah yeah and so if you could look at every action that that you do before you do it is how can i make this not about me you could even bring this like if we take it back into the arguments you know your your partner comes back late you don't know where they've been and so the first thing that you want to start doing is talking about yourself, right? How did you make me feel? Mm -hmm. How as totally right? Instead yeah. of like the altruistic way, which is seeing how, how do they feel? Are, is everything okay with you? Yeah. You know, you were out, uh, did anything happen? Yeah. Right? Like, um, yeah, I just care about your health and safety. And then she's like, well, I was, you know, sleeping with your brother. And you're like, okay, well, <laughs> I did, was it good? You? <laughs> you know, like they don't always end well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then, but, but even like, like situations like that, then you could bring it, bring it back to, you know, it's, it's not about you. There was something in that relationship that made it so that she felt like she needed something from someone else that you weren't giving her or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like, so Maybe you accept that and be like, well, we could work on this or you could, you can only work on it like a problem like that. If you don't immediately put yourself as a victim, how yeah. could you do this to me? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I can't believe that. Instead, it's like, what are, what are these parts in you that are not fulfilled that are causing you to act out in this way? Mm -hmm. Is it worth the relationship to try to fix it? Or is this where we part ways? But I, I don't, if you know, I could part ways of like, oh, this, this hoe, you know, whatever. <laughs> like she did this, she slept with my brother and yeah. like, and then you have hate. Now you have hate towards your brother, which like your, you your, like you know, should never, accent you your brother, like, yeah, your brother should never sleep with, with my brother. Yeah. What, whatever it is, you uh -huh. know, um, but it, it, it brings you down Yeah. because you made it about you yeah. because it was, it was selfish and one of the actions, but how can I, okay, well, you know, this is what happened. Like now this conversation, how do I make this conversation not selfish? Mm. How do I make this conversation about you and how you feel? And it, and it might not be those things that are going to work well for, for me, but if it's something I need to walk away from, it's going to be a lot easier okay. walking away from somebody that, that needs their space and I'm not the right person with versus someone who wronged me. Wronged me. Yeah. 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 How can you do this to me? Yeah. And, and it's, it's an interesting concept. Like, I, I really like that a lot because it also lets, it takes a lot of emotional charge out of being, a, like, it takes a lot of work to be a victim. People that, mm. people don't think that, but it really takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of work. Keeps there, I, I don't want to call anybody out on there, but there's there's friends of mine, and I, I see it on Instagram, that, that people that went through these traumatic relationships, and it could be 10 years ago, and they're still talking about how I'm a victim of an abusive relationship, and they're giving advice on on how to and maybe like maybe that really helps some people out and that's great and more power to that side of it however that works but also at the end of the day for you to move on you have to let go yeah yeah like that's that's all moving on is letting go yeah one of my teachers said uh forgiveness is bullshit just stop blaming yeah and i was like that was gangster denise Payne. she came through with that and i was like it took me a while because I needed to like forgive my father, like forgive my neighbor, people who like robbed me when I was a you know stupid drug, like shit like this. And I was like so angry. 
And it's just like, well, yeah, there's a whole thing on forgiveness. It's like really a superpower you need to forgive. And the other part of it is just like, let it go, stop blaming. Shit happened. And how you react to it is your responsibility. And I'm like, okay, cool. But I like what you said about the not being, it not being about you situation. That's why, you know, just coming back to Vancouver, it went so well for me because I was like, okay, I got two weeks here, which turned into 10 months. But it was like, uh, I'm just going to show up for my family. I just want to love them up. Like I haven't seen them in three years, Corona accident, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to go to Vancouver and just be a ball of loving kindness with a mm -hmm. tattooed outer layer. And then everything turned out super awesome that way. But the last like four times I went back, you know, as like I was transitioning through and growing and all this shit, it was really difficult going back because I went and there was just so much like trauma there for me of like just stickiness of like family relationships and, and, and my past and just like the triggers and all that, you know. And this was the first time I went back where I was like, actually, this is great. Like I had a different mindset around it of I just want to go and, be, and, sh and love up my family. That's, I'm just going to go and show everybody that I love love everything's so much easier and then awesome shit started happening like I, I, it's like i opened a window for just cool things to happen continuously and i've been playing with that a lot lately that was like very rewarding and it made vancouver better it, yeah it made that experience so much easier for me you know what i mean yeah that's great <laughs> no I'm, I'm i'm happy for you like we all missed you here yeah but I missed you, you know, guys um again like that goes in like that selfish thing right instead of like the wanting you back here because yeah totally missed you like we all we all missed you um but more thinking about you know it's it's easier to not uh, this is also from being on the road a lot and traveling so much to to think about like where how you want somebody to show up in your life is to make you happy mm. right rather than how how you want to show up in someone else's life is about them just being happy. Mm. And so knowing that you were it back in Vancouver taking care of what you needed to do and you're being happy and you're seeing your family and stuff made it so like I didn't need to miss you because that was just about me, mm. you know? So then you could put it back. Yeah. It's just it's still okay to miss somebody. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's fine. It's fine to miss somebody, but you miss them differently. Yeah. Right. And yeah. instead of them like, like, instead of you like longing for this not that i long for you yeah. but of course on. i okay i long for thank you. you uh but yeah you just like see is like you know they they're doing what they need to do yeah 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 i hear that man yeah it was interesting being back yeah it, it's wild you know coming back to the island now and seeing everybody and it was it's funny because I had like a little bit of anxiety when I first was landing actually the plane was landing and I was like I had like anxiety I was like well I haven't felt this in a while and then when I when I got back, then like in one day, like I had some something not work out for work, and I had somebody quit that was supposed to just start. And then I had like my truck break down while I was having that conversation, and I was like, "What am I doing to attract this in?" And I was like, "Well, you're like, oh well, Bali is exactly the same as it was when I left. <laughs> <laughs> it felt worse. It, it felt worse. But then I noticed that I think I was like, and then it was like the eclipse, and I'm like, is this eclipse energy? And I was like, really like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah your your car broke down because it hadn't been serviced yeah for exactly like exactly. 10 months because you weren't there to take care of it yeah you know like yeah yeah like, like logically all, like, yeah logically like none of it was in no voodoo like <laughs> that's all i was like oh, is this the eclipse is this bali yeah. like coming out i need to go home and sage my house yeah. like, <laughs> for real like actually like i had a minute where i was like yeah. you know like like worried about it for like about 10 minutes and then I was yeah. like, no, logically, <laughs> yeah. this is just consequences <laughs> of my actions and things going on. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Stop like overhyping shit. That happens a lot in the spiritual community too. And I was like, well, yeah. Um, yeah, coincidence. People, I, I think just in general, we like to, we like to find reason behind coincidence. Yeah. You know, like this happened, this happened. And, or I, you'd say uh, causality versus coincidence. And, and most of the time, it's coincidence. What do you think of the whole everything happens for a reason thing? Uh, I, everything happens, and you could find a reason for it. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Just like everything's happening. Yeah. Is it, things are just happening. I, I, everything, everything, yeah. You could, you could find a reason for everything happening. <laughs> for real? Yeah. So what do you think of this whole, like, divine cosmic plan? Whatever, I don't know. Whatever gets you through the day. It makes you feel better. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I actually really like that. Like, divide, yeah, whatever. Whatever gets you through the day, man. Yeah. If it helps, that's... Life, I think the one thing that we could, we could all agree on 
life can be very painful. Definitely. Yeah, you get by a truck. Right. You could, either, you could hit a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yeah, I hit the truck. But yeah. You could, you could drive underneath a truck, and then that truck could drive over you. True. Right. <laughs> but yeah, life, life can be painful, but life doesn't have to be suffering. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and so this is, this is how, do, how do we take life that is, that is obligated to be painful? That's, uh, we survive because we experience pain. Yeah. There's a, there's a reason for it. It's not because we experience pleasure. If, if it was like pleasure, it'd be everlasting. If pleasure was everlasting, we wouldn't be here as a species. Pain is what keeps us safe. Pain is what gets us to the next meal. Like mm -hmm. I, I eat, you know, I'm going to have dinner because of the pain in my stomach that says I need to eat. Otherwise I wouldn't go spend money on food. <laughs> I don't care how good it is. I'll keep that money in my pocket. <laughs> no, you know, like the pain, pain is what keeps us alive. It, it's what keeps us moving forward, but no one wants to suffer. And, and so you could say suffering yeah. is human, but suffering is choice. Yeah. And we all make different choices within that. How do, how do we justify pain to only be pain and not suffering? And some people might say, uh, you know, divine cosmic experience. That is, you know, my life. Uh, there, there are certain things that I, I don't agree with where you put your life and your choices in, in, an, in an idea or a belief like the universe like the universe, what is the universe? Like the universe is just empty space with some stars and gas and planets and stuff. Like it doesn't have thought. It doesn't care about you. It's, it's so massively big. Or you could say that the, and I'm someone that believes in energy. I, and like we are all made up of energy. But energy doesn't have emotions unless it's emotional energy, which is just how you would interpret it, how different uh, hormones and how your nervous system responds to outside stimuli. That, that's all it is. Yes, all matter is energy. All energy has the ability to convert back into matter. But beyond that, when you, when you say that, like, you know, trust the universe, then you're, you're taking the, your control, your choices out of your hands and you're putting into something that, that I don't know, you know, whatever. It's, you're putting it into belief. Mm -hmm. So the universe is a belief. The universe is a belief. The universe is another, it's, it's a synonym for God. Yeah. It's the universe, trust the universe is for the people that don't want to say trust God. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. It's like, oh, I can't figure my way. I'm an atheist, can't figure my way around this religious shit, but I still want to be spiritual, so trust the universe. <laughs> you can be spiritual and also not trust the universe. Yeah, totally. Like spirit, spirituality is how, how do I connect heart to heart with someone else? Yeah. How do I connect to, to all life, you know? And I know I'm not going to connect to this table. Why not? It's a nice table. It is nice. I was actually admiring. It. I like how they did this char it's over it. It's cool. And I was I was thinking, yeah, it's just a stump. Anyways, we can talk about. I'm into furniture. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, like I'm not going to. I don't care about my relationships with inanimate objects. Yeah, like the the earth itself. Like I'm. I like the earth. It's 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 a it's a convenient rock that supports life super convenient super convenient i happen to be here yeah you know like i want to take care of it it's my favorite rock but it it has does not care if i live or die yeah at all no at all nor does the grass nor does any animal in this in uh, on this entire planet care if i live or die yeah mostly right. you're hurting though <laughs> mostly they're like stop walking on me right yeah, yeah. but i mean yeah. people we care we care if other people yeah live or die and for the most part it's for a selfish reason mm -hmm. What would you say is for the most part a selfish reason? So state if it was like if you care about the people in foreign countries, you know, wars, which often we don't as a species. We're just kind of like, yeah, it's happening in, in well, know, Kosovo, whatever. Yeah. Or Ukraine. Yeah. You know, like, like it's just bring it to what's actually. Yeah. yeah. You actually know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I want them to survive. Like, genuinely. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I mean, they're... I want all people to be happy because if, if all... everyone was happy and, and you know, there wasn't division, it wasn't separation, life would be better for ourselves. And that, there's, mm -hmm. that, there's that selfishness in yeah. there, yeah, yeah. right? Like I want everybody happy because my life will improve dramatically if mm -hmm. there's not war and conflict. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that self, I mean, everything's selfish. So, Did you think this when you were a Marine? 
Uh, I didn't have a lot of deep thinking when I was a Marine. Yeah. I was I was 18 when I joined. And Fuck it was, yeah. it was more like what I was thinking was like one, like how can I be how can I use the military to become a firefighter? Yeah. And then when I had to go to war, I was thinking, well, how do I get my friends home from war? Mm. And then when I got back, I was like, how can I just get out of this and never look back? <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though, like, for the most part of my military, I had a good time because it's just like being a Boy Scout. Yeah. You're, you're outside playing guns and it's fun, and, you know, but until it becomes like a reality where you, where you have to take someone's life or someone's trying to take your life, then that, that changes things a lot. <laughs> but the, the, the biggest thing that it changed for me is my perspective on on life i yeah I, yeah how so uh i mean these these this is not a, a question i think i could actually answer in words no i get it because it's it's more just experiential yeah um the more trauma that you feel the the easier it is to see bliss like yeah right the yeah. the lower the, the lower that you go, that that rock bottom, yeah. and and honestly, there's always a place lower. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean by saying that. I felt like a tingle as as you said that because yeah. I, I, that that struck me very deeply. It was like, yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty grateful for all the trauma that I felt. Like, I don't want to do the accident again, but I'm glad it happened. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, and all the crazy shit I've been through. I'm like, well, I think I don't think I've ever been happier since after getting through the accident like you know once you get your shit together and you can walk again you know like right. through the through the hardest part you're, you get your head above water and you actually i felt a whole new range of happiness and so wild. you probably related really deeply to this idea of the container like yeah. how hard it is for the contents to to be um okay yeah. like to work on that when the container is so fucked up yo it's really hard it's, it was really hard but then it's cool because then you Get your container kind of getting a little bit better a little bit better you can sort of just be grateful for those little things it gives you some stuff to be grateful about yeah um and, and more so and i took it for granted big time you know like i was some asshole taking photos on my ducati in a suit <laughs> you know like after after uh, i remember from, that it was like the next it was day. The day it was the yeah. day before, bro <laughs> talk about karma <laughs> crazy bro yeah. um yeah that whole thing like i i believe that that whole bliss thing it's deep like to actually be able to experience such a deeper level of bliss if we choose to like if we're able to get through it you know and get 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 your shit together after or just meet the trauma there's something awesome on the other side there's, yeah. there's beauty there um but and, that whole that whole idea i'm not my body right did how much when you when you're going through that how much did you feel you are your body oh i was very much my body and very I, much my body was all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> very like, much I mean, my like, body was bent up. I mean, that's a philosophy. I'm not my body. I'm not my mind. I'm mm. not my emotions. All these things. Well, then what are you? Yeah. You're the seer. You're yeah. the observer. The, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't, Sam Harris, he, he uh, I, I really enjoy his, his writings and his talks, but he talks about this idea of uh, there's no one behind, there's, there's no seer right there's there's no one behind looking that is that is you the 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 one looking the one behind the one looking there's no separation between those two and often he this is what he's talking about a lot in like in going in deeper into meditation but oftentimes we're trying to separate that i'm trying to separate who i am from my body i'm trying to separate who i am from my mind i'm trying to separate who i am from my emotions well without all those things who are you mm -hmm. Instead of I am my body, you are one hundred percent your body. Without your body, yeah, whatever happens to the the energy after, we'll find out or we won't. But in in this reality that we are all experiencing right now, without your body, you you're, you're not nothing. experiencing shit. You're, you're, yeah, you are no longer experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. And if your body is not working, how are you experiencing it? Yeah. And so you could still be in a broken body and be happy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. definitely and and yeah. there are there are people that are there are people that are you know, um born without limbs or people that have been in accidents without the ability to walk and live beautiful happy yeah. lives and stuff uh, they're having a different experience which is again not good or bad life is pain mm -hmm. how do we remove suffering yeah. and yeah. so maybe this idea of i'm not my body is a tool that could help bring you there there's nothing wrong with that 
And so it's like it's it's really easy to get pigeonholed into a philosophy and say this philosophy is right or wrong. And it's better to say this philosophy is useful or not useful. And and also how do I translate this? How do I how do I make this for me, apply to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, and once you can start figuring out those things, then you can start to get back to that original thing, which is what is truth? Yeah. It's what life is without me. Mm-hmm. But I'm living this life, so how do I make that useful? What is life without you? You remember that? What life, life without you, meaning without your experience, without your prejudice, without your judgment, uh, without your perspective, without yeah, 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 without you, like your the purple glasses, right? Without yeah, your yeah, purple yeah. glasses. Oh, uh, very interesting. Without the experiencer. What do you think about that whole quantum physics thing that like matter doesn't actually become a solid and and actually form without us looking at it? Oh, uh, the double slit experiment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Another term for it. Yeah, well, that the the idea that matter could be in two different places based on the observer. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't affect uh, that doesn't affect your relationship with your girlfriend, or yeah. how you show up in the morning, or how you take your coffee. So yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, there there are a lot of things of with us trying to understand the universe. Yeah. Um. People people kind of use that and try to think of this the the um, the multiverse or use that as an idea of the multiverse and everything is is happening in multiple dimensions and at once and stuff and I could say with all that still is not going to affect how you take your coffee in the morning and so is that it is it's a science but like most sciences they also come with a bit of philosophy mm. and so does that science does that the philosophy of that science does it serve you is it is it working for you right now yeah. That's what I think about it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. All that stuff. It just how we act. I like the take take your coffee thing. Like that's interesting because there's so much stuff that we can subscribe to out there, and it's like, yeah. is it really making your life better? Is it yeah. directly impacting you? And and, and on your day to day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that whole I know I wanted to talk about nervous system regulation as well because that it really affected me on the day to day because like leaving and moving to Bali and then learning about yoga. I became happier because I started learning how to breathe. I started learning mm-hmm. how to like just walk better and just chill, chill out. Cause I was consistently going from craving, craving, aversion, craving. Like I was really all over the place. I just wanted to feel better at all costs. Um, so I was totally like uh, my stimulus addiction to just not being bored, not being unhappy was off the charts, man. I was just like consistently using drugs or, or sex or, stimulus just more more and more and more and then when i actually started to be like a bit able to be more present uh, i became happier instantly i didn't need all this crazy shit happening in my life or like crazy stimuli you know i just wanted to be here and really be here like you just you just talked about the the problems of the entire world <laughs> right there is um people will if people are not happy yeah they will do whatever they can to be happy yeah and they'll turn to whatever it is that they think makes them happy, even if it's temporary. Yeah. Even if they know that it's only going to be temporary. I mean, that's why people abuse drugs. Yeah. Uh, I, I think drugs are fine. They're great. Have, have fun with them. But when drugs become your ability to be happy, yeah. or when relationships or people or sex or anything, job, money, when that becomes your your need to be happy is when you'll never be happy because it's it's happiness is always going to be fleeting Mm -hmm. short term that pleasure thing Mm -hmm. right why pleasure is not always there and why it's not eternal yeah uh instead of like really understanding that life is waves right you have highs highs and lows and you've never seen a wave in the ocean stay just be like frozen in place Mm -hmm. there and Trying to think, is there the, where the ocean freezes as a wave? Is that a thing? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe somewhere. Is. I don't know. Fuck Siberia or something. There's no, I don't, there's no ocean there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, waves, waves are going. They're, waves going wave. The waves going to wave. There's, <laughs> there's peaks and troughs. You're going to yeah. be at the high. You're going to be at the low, and then it's, it's going to change. Yeah. And how do you calm that down so it's not so high and it's not so low? Yeah. And that's all moves down to perspective. Yeah. But if some, sometimes it's just like there's a chemical imbalance there's a there's yeah. there's an emo- there uh there yeah your nervous system isn't responding isn't giving you the hormones yeah. and the endorphins that you need to to make you feel happy yeah because happiness is a feeling it's it's yeah. a chemical response 
from your nervous system. Yeah, and then once yeah. you you learn how to control your nervous system a little bit better, yeah. Um, and and most people think it's all about being in the parasympathetic nervous system all the time. That's not happiness. Rarely comes from the parasympathetic nervous system. It's from the, it's from the sympathetic nervous system for most people. The go, the go, go. Yeah, the chill, and chill. The, and there's and also like it's the balance in it. Yeah. So you can't be all sympathetic. You can't be all parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. Sympathetic isn't bad. It's only our. So when we start thinking or talking about the nervous system, it's important to talk about safety. Okay. Oh, you How have to feel safe. Feel safe. Yeah. So if you don't feel safe, whatever the situation is, yeah. both part of the ner both parts of the nervous system, parasympathetic and sympathetic, are going to put you in, uh, not in a good place. Mm -hmm. So in your parasympathetic nervous system, it's your freeze response. This comes from the dorsal the dorsal vagal branch, which is like the older branch. So this is where you lock up, you can't speak, you're shut in. Um, you can't look at people, mm -hmm. no eye contact. Basically, the world is the enemy, yeah. and you need to crawl inside your hole. And so that's parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah, that's not fight or flight. That's that's freeze and retreat. And yeah, the the sympathetic nervous system it does the fight or flight. You know, I gotta I gotta do something. I gotta get out of here. I have to escape. I need to either fight my way out or or run. run. Yeah. The more important of uh, with the nervous system is understanding like I how do I feel safe and safety is more especially in in nowadays like when I was in Iraq you know uh, there, I didn't feel safe very often because I went over there at the very start of the war yeah I was part of the the invasion and there was an there was an Iraqi army that was trying to actively kill me doesn't sound safe. Yeah, so you don't, so you're you're going to be in that, but that situation lasted six months. That's a long time to be not feeling safe, bro. But yeah. I didn't feel unsafe that entire time. Okay. I only felt unsafe when the air raid sirens would go off, or when we, you know, we, you kind of always are a little bit on edge. But th there's a lot of stuff that you do where you're joking with your friends, you're telling stories, you're doing you're doing all these things to cope. Mm -hmm. To, to get over that. And I think that's like where all the drugs and everything it cause it's or women or whatever it is, it all just becomes how do I cope through this mm -hmm. rather than getting to a place where I feel safe? Obviously, you're, if you're in war, you're not going to feel safe. But for most of us, we're just going to a job and coming home and we're we're living a day to day life. So why do we feel so unsafe? Mm -hmm. How do I how do I change that? And that has to do with with how you see the world, mm -hmm. your perspective in it. You have to you have to change your point of view. Mm -hmm. And that might be you need to change locations, you need to change relationships or whatever. But then once you figure out what that is, you you, you have to see things as safe. And then you could start to navigate your nervous system with your breath. Yeah. That the 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 tool like so I teach a lot of breathing stuff. I yeah. teach how to move into your sympathetic nervous system in a safe way. I teach how to move into the parasympathetic nervous system in a way that, you know as tools. How do, if I need to be calm and relaxed and meditative and how do I do that? Yeah. Uh, if I'm going to sleep, how do I, how do I get myself into that space? If I want to be active, I want to go run, I want to go communicate, I want to be alert and present. How can I use my breath to bring me there? Neither one of those things matter if I don't feel safe. Mm. And so the situation, like moving through the nervous system, navigating that, all that, none of that matters if you're not safe. Yeah. Yeah. Not if you're not safe, you don't feel safe. Feel safe, you know, because that's kind of well, where I was at when the accident. You know, when I first had it, and I was all banged up on the ground, bones sticking out of my leg, blood everywhere. I couldn't move. It was intense, and I was like, oh, this doesn't feel very safe. But then I was able to consciously like um, move into. I was like, the breath is going to keep me safe here. I like the breath was my anchor. It got me through that because I was awake the whole time, man. And I was like, I got to get myself help. I'm, I'm right. fucked. In the middle of the night here, and, and I'm on a highway, so I regulated my breath. And that was like the one thing I remembered was like the breath, the breath, the breath. Right. It's all you got right now. That was, yeah. that was your coping. Yeah. That was, the, yeah, that was the tool that you had. Well, there wasn't even morphine lying around. So <laughs> to do it, I asked. Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you about the Panadol story? The, 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 so when I had the accident and obviously some Balinese people all stopped us on the highway, blocking the highway. And this like Balinese mom gets off her bike and she comes up, she's freaking out. And I'm like, like I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not screaming. I'm not yelling. I'm just trying to get my shit, shit, get my shit together. And she comes up and she's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Like freaking out. I'm like, 
okay, I'm asking her to calm down. Like, Ibu, please, yeah. can you calm down? Because I'm like, okay, this must be really bad. She started freaking me out. She was, she yeah. was really, and then she's like, oh, hold on, hold on. She pulls out of her purse one Panadol, like one single aspirin, and gives it to me. And I'm like, yeah, like that's funny. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> like what? I didn't say no, but I was just yeah. like, do you have morphine in there? Like kind of thing. Yeah. Like, oh my god, it was ridiculous. I was like, one of those like kind of cosmic jokes, you know? Like, <laughs> right. that's ironic. Like, I think the universe can be ironic, or we find reason, we find irony in the stuff. Mm -hmm. But do you think? There is like a there's a sense of humor out there that can put you in positions or you find it funny. I think you just find it funny. Huh. I, I don't I don't there's nothing because if you really try to start making sense all this, you realize how none of this makes sense. OK, like, yeah, you don't like if, it, if, if yeah, cosmic no, order, no, Akashic records. No, no, of course not. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> of course not. Of course not. It's, I love how realist you are about this. Like you're a deep yogi, you go into it, but I really always appreciate how you're just like <laughs> hard line on these things. It, it, I find it hilarious. And like, I'm open to all these, all the perspectives. And I think sometimes those like fluffy cosmic ones, like make me feel better. Like they just like can make you feel good. Yeah. So it's whatever gets you through the day, man. But I always love how you're like, no, I just love that about you, bro. <laughs> One thing that I really like about yoga or yoga philosophy or Hinduism or like these, the because uh, yoga has a lot of roots in, in Hinduism mm -hmm, and stuff, mm -hmm. is, is that you don't have to believe all of it. Mm -hmm. I So I came from more of a, I came from a Christian background. I grew up very religious Christian. And, and one of the things with that, and I'm not speaking ill of it at all, but just in how I was taught it, I was even a youth pastor at one time. Like, I, no like, way. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah <laughs> knowing you now and hearing yeah. that is pretty funny. But the, the, yeah. the, the aspect with that was that you had to believe all of it. Mm -hmm. And so that I had a really like, and I did, I believed it was the infallible word of God and everything. Mm -hmm. And there was, but there was so many things that I disagreed with. Yeah. And so when I started studying yoga philosophy and Buddhism and Jainism and Hinduism, all, all these different philosophies or religions, I realized like, I don't need to take, everything as as truth yeah. or i could just take the things that serve me the philosophies that work for me and because it's all made up yeah 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 exactly right? philosophy even truth like truth at a certain extent is is kind of made up like mm -hmm. when we when we start talking about these philosophies there are people that had an idea that wrote it down that spread it and it spoke to us and it made our lives better and so you could and we call that truth mm -hmm. You know, but it was, it's still, it's still just perspective. Yeah. And it's still just how, how we choose to see the world. And so, uh, yeah, I, I love yoga philosophy, but Ishva, uh, Ishvara Pranadana, right? The devotion to the divine or whatever. It's like, I, um, I don't really like, how do I see the divine? How does that, how does this, do I hold on to this philosophy? Do I modify it? Do I just let it go? You know what is what is this word divine? Mm -hmm. Like we talk about all the time, yeah, divine yeah, yeah. feminine, divine yeah. masculine, or yeah. whatever the divine Very mother, the right divine now. universe. Yeah, the divine. What what the fuck does divine mean? <laughs> like define it to me. Yeah, yeah. What does it mean to you? No, what does it mean to you? I believe that there's an energy that's intelligent that's binding all this together. Like there's something that created all of this, but it is it. Like the energy is it. And that's what I believe is the divine. I, I don't think there's a guy up there, you know, pulling strings. Right. But I do believe that there is this cosmic energy that cr is creation energy that forms planets, that kills planets, that forms the an ever expanding universe. And that energy, if we tap into it, is our purest form. And that's truth. Like, okay. That's kind of so you kind of so like you it. give it a human intelligence. I don't think it's well about uh, human but, intelligence. Right, right. But it gives you, but us you, human intelligence. But you give it, you think that it has some sort of intelligence. I think it's, it's definitely, to create all this, there's some sort of intelligence. There. I don't think it'd be purely coincidental for all of this to happen, for us to have consciousness. I think that there'd be something. But it's so easily explained as coincidental <laughs> that all of this happened. And, and so like when you start that sentence, I believe, yeah. immediately you take fact and you're like, Okay. <laughs> I believe. I believe means yeah, yeah. That's faith, it. Yeah, right? That's it. I, well, I can't. I, don't know I can't better. explain something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to fill in the space. That's, all I, could, that's all I could. That's all right. I could give it. Fuck. Fuck. Do I know? And and if that if that you know helps you through the day, then that's <laughs> great. For for me, it's like yeah. I don't need that. 
okay. don't I don't need first of all like it makes that belief doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Right. So, yeah. but that's me. That's my yeah, interpretation. Or like, I, again, like I whatever want everyone, the whatever gets you through the day. That's <laughs> what I, like, and whatever doesn't infringe on, on somebody else's Definitely. life. Yeah. And there's a lot of beliefs that do that, that, yeah. you know, there's like, God hates gays and Bro, the, I was just about revelations 21, eight. Yeah. Revelations 21, eight. There's a Bible verse. Go look it up. God hates liars, thieves, homosexuals, rapists, like all these, like just basically all these bad people. God hates. Well, God is love. Um, how can God hate? Because he, I mean, like I just I have questions for days and yeah, for that divine intelligence, how all this came to be. The universe is so big and massive and we are such a tiny speck and it's also been around for billions of years. And the only thing that needed to happen was a happy accident where you, for life and intelligence to happen. Happy for, accident. Well, yeah. all, two things needed to replicate. That was it. That's what sparked life on this planet. Yeah. The, it was far enough away from a source of heat. Yep. Um, there was an atmosphere to protect us from the radiation that, that happened because the, well, first all life was in the ocean and the ocean was able to protect that, but then that created oxygen, which created the atmosphere. And so that created, well, first of all, for life, even to start, you had, you had something that was able to replicate itself. Mm -hmm. And then because it was able to replicate itself, it was able to do that again. And from that became life. And you do that over billions and billions of years, what, like, and, and this is stuff that is, you know, us with with our our limited knowledge and yeah. whatever. Like, we actually see proof and evidence that this happened. There's no belief in in this system. There's, there's factual evidence. There's factual empirical evidence. That what do you think about the the jump from apes to humans was a pretty big jump, and there's some missing stuff. The apes apes to humans is not that big of a jump, and we only think that because we have an intellectual hubris that we think that we are so smart. Because oh, an ape could you know use a straw, but I could actually I can make a glass. I can make the straw. You know what? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. use tools differently, uh, and we could we could have this conversation. Yeah. But the difference between apes and us is you know a. a few percentage different in our dna yeah yeah but apparently there was something that i heard before but i i came up with a theory that aliens came down and fucked a bunch of monkeys and that's like actually how we actually became i, I just think that's probably well there's probably. definitely <laughs> evolutionary well we first of all we didn't come from apes and that's yeah. that's like yeah. the the biggest mistake is you think that we came from apes if we came from apes why are there still apes we diverged off of yeah off of a primate and then a lineage alien just, jizz bro <laughs> Sure. I mean, I, I, there's definitely more than enough probability that there are other intelligent life yeah. out there. Yeah. The universe is so big uh, that we probably will never see it. And if yeah. we do, then we should be worried because they're so far, far beyond advanced than us that for them to come here, there's probably a reason yeah. that they would be coming here. And would yeah. they even look at us as, as humans or intelligent life? Or would they look at us as ants or dogs? Yeah, 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 this yeah. is a whole nother conversation <laughs> for like getting into that sci-fi weirdness I, stuff. I love this shit. Though. But also but yeah. also that does exist in the realm of truth and yeah. possibility yeah. more than the idea that, that, a, that, I mean, even like if aliens came and, and procreated with monkeys, first of all, why would they do that? I think a science experiment, just to like put their DNA and see what happens. Like it was an experiment. It's not like they did it for pleasure. Or maybe they did. There's people who do it's strange it. shit. But you know, I mean, I respect your theory, but <laughs> it just <laughs> it, it it lacks it lacks uh, evidence. Be, beyond logic. that, it, it it lacks logic. <laughs> it lacks a why would that happen? Okay, well here's what I was thinking, and and then uh, let. <laughs> go on, go on, go on, okay go on. so just just the the idea of yeah. the, the universe having this in, intelligence behind it we are such a small insignificant speck yeah yeah we're speck that, of a speck of a speck of dust that yeah like why would the universe be so big and why only this and it could and, not be only this that's just so right i always think that or yeah. but within i don't know <laughs> As as far as we could see into our event horizon, as as we know, like there probably is something out there, but not within in our realm. And that's just that's probability. What do you think about all these UFO sightings coming up? It's like that's that's a whole thing, more and more uh, trending. 
Well, you notice that every single person has a has a, a camera in their pocket and all these things, and yet we don't have anything that's even remotely conclusive evidence. There's just those like uh, army, you know, air force. Oh, that you know, that I, I, wa I watched all that stuff. What is, what is, like, what's your opinion on it? My that wasn't an opinion. They came out and were like, "Oh, is that like before that they they had the cameras just service?" And there was the reason why it was jumping from one side to another is because there is actually something on the sensor. It like very simply explained. Okay, so and then twisted hype, hype, yeah, hype. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, it was. I watched a whole thing that just broke it down and and how ridiculous it is. Okay. And if there if there were aliens that came to this planet, don't you think that they would make their presence a little bit more known? Maybe if they if they had the power to to travel a, across the universe, yeah. Don't you think they have the power to like um not be affected by our weapons or care or yeah. whatever? Like why would they come here? I mean, why would you go to another planet? I mean, what what is the one reason why people would go to another planet? Oh, you'd be taking some shit for sure. Your planet's your planet's running out of resources. Resources on this resources, planet for yeah. sure. Yeah, of course. It's the only reason to to venture out yeah. into like why we want to explore Mars now or, yeah. or whatever. It's because we're looking for something out there that we don't have here, or we need to leave here. It sounds like those aliens should be a lot more present and happy with what they do have. Right. So if aliens did come here, yeah. if they ventured across the galaxy and were able and to come here, it would probably be for resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It probably wouldn't be just to make friends. Or research or yeah. whatever. Either way, probably a bit more evidence. So like not, not saying that aliens haven't ever been here or whatever. I'm saying like probably not. <laughs> all right, all right. And if if they did Probably it'd be more than a fucking speck that went from here to here, and, and some guys like that's impossible. Nothing can move like that that fast, right? Well, if it's impossible, and nothing can move like that that fast. It probably is because it's impossible, and nothing can move like <laughs> it that fast. Because I'm pretty sure the physics of the universe don't give a fuck about what species you are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether you're from this planet or another planet. Physics are physics. Yeah, I wonder if. I'd like to bet you if we're and right now I'm talking about a lot of stuff that I really don't have any expertise on. So this is kind of this we're, is we're just shooting the shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we What are we even doing now, bro? Uh, I don't know. We're just talking. <laughs> um, but I wanted to actually to ask you around back to the nervous system stuff. Mm. Uh, I wanted to get into like you know that's that's how I regulated my nervous system during the accident to get myself help. To I was bleeding out. I hit my perennial artery in my in my right leg, and so that's how I actually almost died. I was bleeding to death. And that whole hemoglobin thing, I had to learn about actually what that was real time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck that means. And that, you know, right now we have about 16. That was a, the 16 hemoglobin is how they they measured it here. And I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about in this. But uh, hemoglobin, hematocrit, they're just talking about your your blood and hemo, hemo iron globin. Yeah. So it's uh, what holds oxygen. Yeah. And and the amount. And your red blood cells. That you have in your body, you know, how, much, how much is present when they, when they actually like uh, measure that. So we're at normal range, you know, around 15, 16. To get a surgery, you need to have 11. So because you're going to bleed a lot during the surgery, you need to have it 11. If you're under six, uh, you're probably going to die. And mm -hmm. when they measured mine, I had 5.9. And they're telling me all this, and I'm like awake, and they're telling me this. I'm like, get me some hemoglobin. I'm you, fucking, yo, yeah. order me the hemoglobins. And it was like I had to get like 15 blood transfers to get me just well enough to get a surgery. But it was, it was a wild thing to be a part of. But I believe it's because I was able to regulate my breath. You know, I believe it's because I was able to calm my shit down mm -hmm. so I don't bleed out so much. Um, now, in real world, like say you're going through an argument, say you're in traffic, say you're stressed out, say you're nervous, what's the way to breathe um, to, to be able to calm yourself down and get your shit together? I'd, I'd say first is to recognize the situation that you're actually in. Okay. You know, like put yourself in that safety. Like that's that's a whole like – Take a deep breath, count to 10. Mm. That's not about the breathing or the deep breath or anything. That's about like, you know, quit being so reactive to whatever that is. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as far as like the breath goes with the nervous system, it's super easy to control. And, and, and if you breathe slow or hold your breath, it brings you into your parasympathetic. If you breathe fast, then it brings you into your sympathetic. And that's, that's really it. So breathe slow if you want to calm down. Mm -hmm. Hold your breath. You want to calm down like i i hold my breath all the time 
there's there's a lot of different reasons for for breath holding but to navigate the nervous system when you when you look at uh when you look at um your hrv which is your heart rate variability so this is has to do with the difference between each each pulse that you have so as your heart beats you know, let's say your heart's beating at 60 times per minute, it's about 60 times per minute. The more regular those heart, those beats are, meaning that the time in between them, the more you're in your sympathetic nervous system because the sympathetic nervous system is what controls the heart rate, the regularity of it. The parasympathetic nervous system acts as a break. So a way, a way to think about this, of how the nervous system, nervous system navigates. Sympathetic nervous system is always ready to go because it's it's there for your fight or flight it's there for safety so it has to be it has to be fast your parasympathetic nervous system is a break it's either on all the way mm -hmm. slightly off or all the way off. you know it's like if you imagine that range is slowing down or speeding up or coming to a stop yeah. imagine that your right foot uh, don't ever drive with your right foot on the gas and your left foot on the brake but you know but imagine that <laughs> You're one of those people that drive with your right foot on the on the gas the whole time, left foot on the brake. And so if you have the gas on all the time and then you then you, you're trying to stop and slow down with the brake. So you could you could overpower the gas by applying the brake really strong, but as soon as you let it up, it's just the car is just gonna take off. Or mm -hmm. you could slowly let it up. So you're really quick to go into the nervous system. That's why that's why when you're in your sympathetic, it's very regular, because that's mm -hmm. what controls the heart rate. Uh, the parasympathetic is trying to slow the sympathetic down. The word parasympathetic means around the sympathetic nervous system. This is happening from the vagus nerve, mostly from the vagus nerve, mm -hmm. your cranial nerve number 10. So you could slow it down or apply it. Or another way to think about it is you have a, a still with the car, the car at the top of a hill, and the hill is infinitely long, and you put your foot on the brake, and the car stopped. And so then you take your foot off the brake, the car is going to start going really fast. Yeah. The faster that the car is going, the more energy that it's going to take to slow it back down and stop it. Okay. Right. So, but the hill is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system is the brake. So this is what we're working through with our, with our nervous system. Parasympathetic is always on, it's always going, but we're just trying to slow it down or, or stop it. So when um, we look at that, and this is, with our HRV heart rate variability, if we look at one heartbeat to another, the greater the distance, or the sorry, the the more irregular that is, the more parasympathetic, because that's just because it's slowing down the sympath the sympathetic nervous system from doing what it's doing. So this is how we measure recovery with HRV when we have a high HRV, meaning a lot of variability, mm. a lot of irregularity. That means that we're really in our uh, parasympathetic nervous system, and it means that we've recovered. But I could also look at it and I could notice that when I inhale, the heart gets fast, the, 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 the R to R, that's the, which is the, the part of the pulse that you measure, um, the, the QRS complex, which is the, the um, depolarization of the ventricles. So when you look at the R to R, on the inhale, they get shorter, which means sympathetic. When you exhale, they get longer, mm -hmm. parasympathetic. So you could see that slowing down so if i work on s slow breathing it's going to bring me down but again like the, the faster that i'm going the more i'm in my sympathetic the longer that it's going to take me to get back to yeah. my parasympathetic where going to the sympathetic is always very fast because it's it's ready to to jump right into that mm -hmm. and so that that's that's how you navigate it if you if you want to calm down all you got to do is breathe slow. Mm. Like it's nothing really complicated. The science behind it's actually very easy as well. I know I've, maybe I made it confusing, Some but big fucking words, like I said. Yeah, I, the big words. Just, but like to make to make it easy, if you want to calm down, breathe slow. Yeah. If you want to have a little bit more energy, breathe fast. Mm, and that's basically it. The other little things that you could do to add into that is breathe through your nose. Mm -hmm. The paranasal sinuses create nitric oxide, which is a neurotransmitter that allows the, the body to calm down. It also helps with the absorption of oxygen, so it brings you to that calm place. Nice thing to do is take a slow breath through the nose and then hold it, allow the nitric oxide to get absorbed, allow the heart rate to go down, and then exhale either through the nose or through the mouth and repeat. So what, that's what's the whole thing about mouth breathers? Because I've been told about this. Like, yeah, you gotta make sure you're breathing through your nose. Is that kind of 
Uh, the mouth breathing. So it there's there's a lot to think about with with breath. Uh, so the the first thing, the most important thing to think about is CO two tolerance. We breathe based on how much carbon dioxide we have. So we the faster we breathe means that we have a lot of CO two. Like if you go exercise, mm -hmm. your your muscles are using up oxygen and they're put, they're putting out CO two. And so that's what that CO2 level gets higher and your body says, okay, you got to breathe faster to get rid of the CO2. It has nothing to do with how much oxygen you have. The CO2 is also what it helps to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. It also helps with the absorption of oxygen into the cells. This is via the Bohr effect, which just states that the higher the CO2 or the higher the acidity, the greater or the... Um, uh, the less the affinity to oxygen it has. So it's able to, to, to leave the red blood cells, the hemoglobin, and get into the cells. Um, you want to have a really high CO2 tolerance, okay. meaning you want to breathe less. You want to breathe slow. Uh, uh, trying to make this into an easy way without spending an hour going over all the science. No, so, but basically what I see out of that is like, because when I hyperventilate, and when a lot of people do, when they're really triggered, they breathe in their chest up yeah. high and <laughs> like really freak out. And that's where belly breathing, I know you told me this many times, you know, it's like breathe out of your belly, not out of your mouth. And like, don't breathe out of your mouth, breathe out of your nose and, you know, expand the diaphragm. And mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, I always feel calmer when I'm conscious of that. And that's something that I've really had taken into account. That's, that's important. One of the main reasons why breathing through the nose is important is because your your nose is where the majority of the nitric oxide comes from. So if you breathe through the, your mouth, you don't get any of that. Nitric mm. oxide is created in, in your paranasal sinuses. Mm. It's in, in all the epithelial cells, but it's like 12-fold in, in the nose. So okay. when you breathe through the nose, you get the nitric oxide, which allows you to calm down. That's why taking a breath through the nose is relaxing. Mm. Taking a deep breath is relaxing because it also... Uh, slows down the nerv nervous system while you get a lot but you don't want to go <sighs> like that's not a relaxing breath yeah, yeah that's the opposite the nose also down regulates how much air that you bring bring in so it, it forces you to breathe slower breathing slower is going to bring you into your mm. parasympathetic nervous system there's there's a lot of other reasons as well but you, essentially for your athleticism for your health your well-being you want to have a high co2 tolerance you're going to breathe based on your CO2 tolerance. So if you're used to breathing fast and a lot, and especially through the mouth, then you're going to have a rapid breath rate, which is going to affect all your systems, your yeah. sleep, your nervous system, your eating, all that stuff. The, a way to think about it is, is diet. So if I eat a lot of food and I'm used to a high calorie diet, I'm going to continue that high calorie diet. And I'm when I'm hungry, I'm going to need 4,000 calories or whatever to satisfy that because that's what I'm used to. But as I go on a diet, I get used to this calorie restriction and I need less and less calories to be healthy mm. and my body changes because of it. Mm. And so it's the same thing with the breath. If you breathe fast, your body's going to need you to breathe fast. You have to go actually on like a breath diet <laughs> to breathe less and yeah. slower and through the nose. And, and that will actually help with all the other things. So big, yeah. that's like the big reason. I love it. And also like the obvious, the nose humidifies and filters out the air. Lungs are wet gooey sponges they they like moist air they don't want to have dry air in that it's not that's not good that's not obvious i didn't fucking know that well you had these things in the nose called turbinates um i don't know any of this shit <laughs> obvious <laughs> fuck, i don't know what the fuck a turbinate is the little little flappy things in, of course in your flappy yeah, things. Yeah. okay uh yeah so the the nose humidifies the air I'm really happy you told me that because it's kind of like, you know, when I was a kid, I hated broccoli. And then when I learned broccoli is good for me, I'm like, okay, you know, like once I learn why yeah. and, and have a vague grasp understanding of all this shit that you just said, I, now I'm like, okay, like the breath through the nose. Okay, I'm, let me ask you a question. Why is it good to believe that the universe has a divine plan for you? <laughs> why is it good? How is yeah. it beneficial to trust in the universe? I, I believe it makes me feel like there's a, a, a benevolent nature to the universe. And then that makes me want to be a better person and kinder because I feel the like universe is kind. So if that's the nature of what's going on here and there is kindness coming around, if I'm kind, I'm in alignment with the universe. And if I'm in alignment with the universe, my world's going to get better. It's selfish. My life will be better. What gives you the impression that the universe is kind? I believe it's 
Kind, kind to who? I believe there's to, a to humans. Just in general, it's a creation energy. It's it's expansive. Then how come how come the the billions of stars around us and planets have no life, but this one does? We don't know that. Well, for the most part, we do. No, we don't. Mm. Yeah. I I I would say we can't possibly know if there is. No, no we definitely can't know that there is or there isn't. Yeah. I'm just saying, for the most part, yeah. the majority of of all the planets that we see but that's what what we see right right of course um but why wouldn't why would not all the planets or everything like have life like what's the what's the point of you you mentioned it earlier they're not in the right distance from the star so they they don't have the right actual chemical makeup you watch the star wars the new like mandalorian and like the new disney ones uh, a little bit. Okay, you know how to sell. I mean, obviously it's a fucking TV show, but like it's true. It's true though. It's it based on based on real true facts. <laughs> but all the planets they go to that have life have kind of like a similar. They're either like the jungle planet or like the desert planet right, or the yeah. ice, like all of them that actually have life. Mm-hmm. But then there's all these other moons and stuff. Obviously, they, there's nothing on it because they can't. They're too far from the sun or too close. So. Okay. All right. All right. That was a shitty argument. I agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what about this? What about I want this? One. What about yes, this? Yes. This one? Okay. <laughs> what about, what about uh, this one? What about like <laughs> how just horrible most things are or a lot of things. I actually think most, most people are generally good, but there, no, but there's some crazy shit out there. There's some it's really bad, genocides. there's it's some horrible. really bad things. And, and yeah. there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of hate. Yeah. There's a lot of hate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if this makes sense, but what I kind of feel out of that is the universe is in polarities. There is darkness, there is light. That is part. Mm -hmm. There can't be light without darkness. There cannot be joy without pain. Trauma, the pain actually helps us experience joy. There's so much immense suffering in the universe and in the world because there is joy as well. So we need both. I agree. I agree with that statement. Fucking two for two, baby. Yeah, but why why would something that's benevolent create a system like that? I think it has to. I think that's the only way it would work. There has you to be think, You think, you think stepfathers raping their their babies is <laughs> is like? <laughs> you, you think that's how the universe needs to work? I fucking don't know. Or is that just free will? Are I don't we getting know. into free will? I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like everything's happening. There's infinite possibilities, and everything that can happen must happen. So it's just like consistently a flux of all the things that could happen. Yeah, I mean, whatever gets you through the day, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's changed a lot. Like, like my idea of it, and it's just an opinion. Because as I learn more new things and experience new it's a things, belief. Exactly. It's opinion, belief, same shit, right? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> is it? Is it? Leave, leave a note in the comments yeah. below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is an opinion the same as a belief? Is an opinion? Is it? I'm getting. Into, is this going to be on YouTube? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Comments. Uh, those are things. <laughs> those are yeah. things. Is a belief? <laughs> YouTube comments are ridiculous. Please yeah. leave nice comments. Those are crazy. Yeah. If you want to see our society and like where we're at, right? YouTube comments. I'm internet just, comment with, uh, internet comment etiquette with Eric. You showed me that guy is hilarious. Yeah. Like actually hilarious. Yeah. That's He's, a good. That's if you want talk about dylan's the king of youtube stuff like, i watch a lot of, i like youtube <laughs> I do. youtube likes you well the thing i like about youtube is it's uh the the content i don't i don't know it's more organic yeah and it's it's less curated yeah less curated less it's it feels more real even even in the things and like yeah. you could watch like 10 completely different things in five minutes totally yeah, yeah I, was, I was watching How to Make Donuts this morning with uh, ba- uh, Basics with Babish. Amazing cooking channel. <laughs> Love it. I, I watch a guy melt stuff. Like in you, watch random, stuff. you watch random I watch shit. a lot of random stuff. Oh, I really, really I really enjoy woodworking. Like when I was talking about the furniture yeah, and stuff, yeah. like I watch a lot of woodworking stuff because I secretly, I think I want to retire from yoga and, and just start making furniture. All right, man. I feel Dil- like there's something really beautiful. Dylan about. Warner Furniture coming out soon. It is, um, yeah. Before that, back to yoga, just what, <laughs> when's your platform coming out? When can people expect it? Oh, great. Thanks. Put me on the spot there. Uh, <laughs> this year. Okay. All right. Well, this podcast will also be out this year. So Perfect. if it's out by that time, we can Dylan get Warner Yoga dot com. I'm I'm redoing my website right now. I'm working with a, a friend who's a developer. It's making it. And then um as soon as my house is done in divine cosmic alignment. Yeah, as soon as as soon as the divine cosmic reality says that it's okay. Yeah. I will start filming all of, <laughs> now, like my, my house should be done in about two weeks or so. Solid. 
So I'm planning on spending every day of May filming yoga classes and meditation and breathing and content. Yeah. Awesome. So when that's out, you got to check Dylan out. If you don't already, he is a master at what he does, in my opinion, in my belief. I'm mediocre at best at anything. Hey, my belief's my belief. Don't belief shame mm. me. And um, bro, just thank you. Thank you so much for this weird and wonderful conversation that went between nervous system regulation, aliens, fucking monkeys. And that was you. I didn't, I didn't talk about that. Was, don't, don't put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> Always a pleasure, my friend. I'm excited yeah. for our dinner tonight. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment. You know, Subscribe. Do all those things, please, because we need those things. And we love you. Peace. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Ink Pray Love podcast. I hope you found it inspiring, entertaining, funny, and also feeling a little bit more present and connected to yourself. Please leave a review and like and subscribe and do all those things. I'd really appreciate that. As well as if you're feeling in a giving mood, this podcast is there for the charities that I love to support. Go to www.aaronbaya.com forward slash charity and get some of those good karma points. This podcast is brought to you by Lighthouse Studios in Bali, as well as Full Reset Coaching. That is my coaching practice. And if you're looking for help in business, inner game impact, and building your legacy to be something you're proud of, your brand, your business, and how you walk the earth and who you impact, and also having the mindset and the heart set to be able to be happy handling it all. I'm here for you. Just DM me. Let's go. Peace out, homies. I'll see you on the next episode.